not only in the Franciscan Bible that I showed you that the Roman Catholic Church speaks clearly that the Bible is not a book of history, although it contains some historical facts, but it is not the science of history as we understand it in our time. When you speak of history, you must speak of a very clear time, very clear persons, very clear uh, events where there are other uh, witnesses for it apart from the document of the Bible alone. But the Bible contains some historical facts and some information about some parts of history. Again, the Bible is not a book of science. It was not intended to be a book of science. It was intended to be a revelation from God about why am I here? What is going to happen to me? Where I'm going? And what is the relationship between me and God? It's a book of salvation, of the love story between the creator and the creation, and how we went astray and his bringing his, us all back as his children into his bosom through the teachings of the Old Testament and the prophets and through his final word, his last final word, which is Jesus Christ, when he wants to say his actual speak, his mind, so to speak, he sent his word, which is born of his mind to be incarnated in the form of Jesus Christ to speak to us. Only God is absolute. All descriptions of God, all what is written in the Bible, is talking about the absolute. But we can't say because it is the word of God, therefore it is historically and scientifically absolutely correct and perfect. Because to assume so, it means that everyone who wrote a word in this Bible had a complete understanding and a complete revelation and vision of all what science is and all what history is. And he could not have said something uh, in any way uh, not literally and absolutely true and exact. That's not possible. If I ask you what did you eat yesterday, you might remember. If I ask you what did you say to your friend on the phone yesterday, you may remember the idea but not the details of the actual words. Isn't it? If I ask you uh, what did you tell me a year ago when we met, you might remember something, you might remember nothing. Now, if we accept that Moses, or, and Moses and people after him, wrote what is written in the book of Genesis and... Uh, what happened, say, in the story of Abraham, who received the three angels, and they had a, a chat between Abraham and the three angels. Abraham lived 800 years, between seven to 800 years before Moses. Now, when Moses tells us the dialogue that went between Abraham and the angels, you cannot accept that this is a literal discussion. But this is the folkloric story that came, and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit told Moses or whoever wrote it, God loved Abraham, Abraham loved God, God wouldn't do anything without making mankind or Abraham the symbol of mankind here, who's his closest friend, know all what is in God's mind and they have to discuss it together and have to agree it together. So that is why God allowed Moses to write the story as it was written. The essential morale of the story, which helps our salvation, is the love of God and his friendship to man. But the details of what did Abraham cook and how many pieces of meat did the angel eat, that is of no significance to us. But it has to be put in a story fashion. And that's what the uh, Roman Catholic Bible tells us. Uh, I think that the Orthodox and the Protestants have two different camps. Some of them are the literalists, creationists, and some of them who are able to accept what I'm saying, that the revelation of science is not against uh, the Bible, and where we have things that seem to conflict as science or history, then history and science belong to the science of history and the science of biology, botany, and anatomy, etc. And the Bible is not to be judged by science, nor the science judged by the Bible. Look at this paper written, and I want you to read it well. You can go for it. It was on Times Online. And although the uh, uh, author of the paper says that the Catholic Church doesn't believe that the Bible is all true, I think what he means here is that the Bible is not all exact rather than not true. And I want you to uh, pause and read the words. And then what they are trying to say here is some people are trying to take things from Revelation and I, I would add also the book of Daniel and say that it is absolutely uh, true in the sense that it is exact. Now, when he says untrue here, it doesn't mean that it is not true, but it is not exact. That's what the author 
would like to say, but as you know, journalists, when they write, they like to play on words to make it look more attractive and more controversial so people would read it, but try to go beyond the words here and understand. And then he starts to tell you what is considered to be true, <coughs> which are the parts that relate to the life of our Lord Jesus on earth and what happened. So what the Holy Synod of the Roman Catholic bishops in Britain in that paper was trying to say is <coughs> they were trying to actually counteract what um, George Bush, uh, Dick Cheney and uh, those politicians around them who were indoctrinated by the Bible Belt extremist Protestant preachers and teachers there who wanted everything to be absolutely literal and they understood the prophecies of the Bible, especially Revelation, to be literal and they still preach that on different TV channels as if they are all a prediction of the future. Then they convinced George Bush, and there is nothing new in what I'm saying, he was saying these things when he, well, uh, when he said his worst mistake of crusades or a crusade in the Middle East. He believed that he is in a way, leading a prophetic role which is going to evangelize the Middle East and change it all into Christians. Now, why is this dangerous, as the paper of the Roman Catholic uh, bishops say? Because it led to all the difficult situations and wars that we have now. I'm not talking politics here. I'm just trying to say that people who try to take prophecies as literal predictions they were trying, in a sense, to twist the arm of God to bring about the uh, realization of the prophecy by trying to take violent actions against others. And they thought that by this they are actually serving God. That, that is no difference really than suicide bombers. They are trying to twist the arm of God because they think that they are doing a service to God by killing others or by taking violence against others. Whether it is Christians or non-Christians doing that, that's non-biblical, non-Christian. That's completely thought and understanding of human beings. So in the Bible, we want to understand that there are symbolic things. And symbolic things, as I said, metaphors, as Christ spoke about himself, are the same like all the parables that Christ said. Uh, now we come to the word parable, which is also the word myth. And myth is not a lie. It is not fiction. And you have to differentiate between the three. Myth is like, say, the novels that Jesus said in his parables, like the works of Shakespeare and any other novelist. What do they do? They take real parts of the relationships of the human being and they condense them in a very concentrated short story that when you read it, it is very true, but in millions of human beings. They relate like the prodigal son and his father and the elder son, uh, like the Good Samaritan, all these are myths because they don't have a real personal name and a real definite time in which they occur and in real definite place. It is a story made out of the building bricks of human experiences put together so that I can pass a moral of a story or an event. So we learn something spiritual, intellectual and humanistic from it. That is what a myth is. It is not a lie. And... Fiction is when you speak of Superman and uh, Star Wars and so on. That's fiction because we know that it doesn't exist, although it has some something similar to reality because there are human beings and flying objects. But a man who can fly, a man who would hit with a bullet and he doesn't die, we know that this is fiction. Now, a lie is a lie. When you try to say something that's absolutely false and you know it's false and you intend to make it false with, in, with full intention, this is a lie. Fiction is not a lie, but you are also not intending to tell people that these sort of Superman and Star Wars creatures exist, but you are making the story as a fun, like a cartoon film. Now, a myth is neither this nor that. A myth or a metaphor, it's truth described in a concentrated matter to pass a certain idea where you cannot describe it in simple words at all. And I want you to understand that these are the parables that Christ said, and that's how we should understand the story of Adam and Eve. It is the truth that described to us in a frame that suits the language and the culture of the past. What we have to do now is to undo that old frame, use our new frame, but present the same big meaning and uh, content of this reality that God created out of nothing and everything in order.